I'm going to be honest with you all. The tech market right now is cooked. There's four paths you can go down to get that sweet and succulent tech job, and each has their own difficulty. We have recruit, your dad is the CEO, regular, college slash computer science student, pardon, a boot camp, and then we have veteran, people who are self-taught. But honestly, in today's job market, everyone's playing on veteran. Like, bro, imagine wasting four years of your life just to end up at McDonald's putting fries in the bag. A lot of people out here are getting laid off and new grads <laughs> good luck to them people from top universities struggling people who've worked at fame companies like google struggling people with experience struggling i myself am a victim to this market why do you think i make these stupid videos and it's not just me that thinks this look at all these youtube videos from experienced engineers they all have similar opinions and do not look at reddit because you'll feel worse if you look at reddit and not only that the interview process is also getting more difficult i've seen posts that all you had to do was solve an easy or medium leak code problem. But nowadays, it sounds like they want you to write an algorithm to solve world hunger in like 10 minutes. Uh, for your interview question, um, create Google. What? Two. Uh, what? Yeah, you got 10 minutes. Wait, what do you- Oh yeah, you have to do it in assembly. Wait. Right, time's up. Wait, what? Yeah, um, that was a good attempt. You'll get an email in a few days letting you know if you pass or not. Interview process is tough. And then we got AI. It's going crazy and it's probably gonna replace us in 10 years. Okay, I'm being dramatic. It's not that crazy. The market itself is not that good, but it's also not impossible. As long as you work on projects, prepare for interviews, network with people, it's possible. It's really just a numbers game. It just takes some effort and a lot of luck, mainly luck, but it's possible. So yeah, I recommend computer science. Bro, just put my fries in the bag. Okay, but seriously, should you study computer science? If you're watching this, you're probably thinking of studying computer science to become some type of engineer. Sloth, I'm already studying computer science. What the f- So let's hope I can help you out and make sure you don't regret your choice. Uh, <laughs> I'll also be using the 2024 Stack Overflow survey to help me out because they interviewed over 65,000 developers and because I'm stupid, I'm probably the least qualified person you should listen to. So uh, let's start off with, do you even need the degree? Technically, no, you don't. A lot of jobs don't require a degree, but a degree will help you out massively. I mean, let's think about it. If you were a recruiter, who would you trust? Each of these people have no experience. We have Bob, who did a three month boot camp. We have Charlie, he self studied for four years, but he doesn't have a degree. Or would you trust Chad? He has a four year degree from a college. If you're the average recruiter, the safe bet 99% of the time is the person with the degree. I wouldn't have pick chat honestly i, I would have gone for ball your base and i respect that but based off the stack overflow survey 66 percent of developers have a bachelor's or a master's degree now does this mean you can't get a job without a degree no there's a bunch of videos of people who did it so just google it if you want motivation but for most people rev up those fryers if you don't get a degree it'll be so much more difficult than if you had the degree and it's already hard as is so let's say you want to get the degree what exactly is computer science well obviously Obviously, it's the science of computers. So Google's definition of computer science is the study of computation, information, and automation. And in my experience, because I have a degree, I know it doesn't look like it, but I do have the degree. Computer science was not what I was expecting. I was out here learning things like discrete math, automata theory, operating systems. I mean, that one was obvious. I'm just stupid. If you like these topics, fair enough. But this is not what I wanted to do. I just wanted to program games and websites. I wanted to make my own Minecraft mod. So what I learned the hard way is computer science is not software engineering. Computer science is all about the theoretical stuff. You'll spend a lot of time on algorithms, data structures, and really just computational theory. So stuff like, how does a computer work? How does a compiler work? Why are these data structures fast? What is a bipartite graph? I forgot what most of this is. To me, this is pretty boring, but sometimes it can be interesting. Sometimes. I mean, you could use Dijkstra's algorithm to become the number one DoorDash driver once you graduate. That's pretty cool. Software Software engineering, on the other hand, is more focused on practical applications. You use the theories to build stuff. So you're basically taking an engineering approach to software. So, you know, software and engineering, software engineering, computer science, you don't really get to build cool stuff. So you're probably thinking, what's the point of this degree then? And fair question. I ask that every day about life. Computer science is pretty helpful because your education is well-rounded. You'll get to build a really good foundation and understand 
understand the fundamentals better than people who self-studied. Usually, you're gonna know the ins and outs of a computer. You're gonna be all up in that computer's guts. And this gives you the freedom to explore different areas of programming. You can now do stuff like explore web development, mobile development, cybersecurity. Uh, you're probably gonna learn some math like calculus and linear algebra, which lets you do data science and machine learning. There's a lot of choices you can do, but you're most likely still gonna be self-taught. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're still gonna be using YouTube University. In my experience, the professors mainly gave you lecture notes to introduce you to the concepts and then they'll give you assignments to work on it. But that's basically it. Like from then on, it's up to you to figure things out because unfortunately, the best way to get better at programming is programming. What a surprise. I mean, even once you graduate, that's not gonna change. You're always gonna be studying on your own. Even in the Stack Overflow survey, it shows where it says online resources are the top choice for developers to learn to code, where apparently 82% of developers use online resources to learn. So um, that's fun. Another concern that a lot of people have is what about AI? Is AI going to replace software engineers? Devon AI. Whoa, guys, now I'm nervous. Devon AI. It's definitely going to put me out of business pretty soon. Put me out of business pretty soon. Once again, from the Stack Overflow survey, 70% of professional developers believe AI is not a threat to their job, but 81% of developers agree that it increases productivity. Currently, 82% of developers already use AI to write code, and this is a pretty big deal. This means that generative AI is an essential and a must-have skill for software engineers. So while it's not going to replace us yet, it's still a pretty helpful tool to know. So if you want a resource to help you learn how to use AI for programming, you can check out Coursera's new course. It's called Generative AI for Software Developers. It's a course designed for anyone that's interested in using AI for programming. So this includes web developers, mobile app developers, front end, back end, you get the point. And don't tell anybody, this video is sponsored by Coursera. Now, if you don't know Coursera, that's pretty weird because over 148 million people use it and they're partnered with over 300 universities and they have partnerships with top tech companies like Google, Microsoft, Meta, and more. Coursera is a learning platform that offers courses and certificates and these certificates certificates are given by the top tech companies, so it'll help you out with your resume and it ensures that you'll be learning from qualified industry leaders. Now, if we take a closer look at the AI course, you're going to be learning from three instructors that currently work at IBM and you're going to go through three self-paced courses. The first course covers the basics of AI, so the use cases, the models, the tools, just the basic stuff. The second course covers prompt engineering, where you're going to explore various prompt engineering approaches and you're also going to learn various prompt engineering tools. And the last course is going to start teaching you how to use AI to boost your programming skills. It's going to teach you how to design, develop, translate text, document, and launch applications. And you'll also gain hands-on experience using AI tools and models like GitHub Copilot, ChatGPT, Gemini for software engineering tasks. Each course has hands-on activities and projects where you're going to take the theories and skills you've gained from the courses and you're going to practice them with real-world scenarios where by the end of the course, you're going to create a personalized learning platform for software developers using ChatGPT. So if you want to get ahead with AI skills that will boost your productivity and effectiveness as a programmer, click the link in the description to get started. Wait, what is this video even about? Well, Oh, should you study computer science? No, don't study it. Please save yourself, please. So we've talked about how computer science makes you a better applicant, makes you well-rounded, but you're still gonna have to self-study some skills. Actually, let me expand on this more. Not only do you have to self-study for school, you have to self-study for jobs. Because remember how I said computer science is more theoretical? They're preparing you for research positions, not for software engineering positions. Now, what does this mean? You're gonna look at the job requirements and you're gonna realize, wow, I don't know a single technology. I don't have a single skill here. Now, unfortunately, this happens to a lot of students, but it's not that bad because remember, if you did computer science, you have a well-rounded education. So you should have a strong foundation, which will make it easier to learn these technologies. But I can understand why some people are frustrated because now you have to work on personal projects while doing your coursework and working on interview preparation. And this sucks because you're paying thousands of dollars just so you can teach yourself these skills using online resources that were free in the first place. So this goes back to the question, why should you even study computer science if it's not going to teach me the skills? And I know what you're thinking. This is a load of barnacles. I heard that!
And I see it, I understand. I was in the same boat, but what I learned, unfortunately, after I graduated, the best part about doing a computer science degree is surprisingly not the education. It's the opportunities you have as a student that you don't get anywhere else. Now, unfortunately, you have to touch grass and socialize, which 90% of computer science students don't wanna do. But there's three big opportunities you get as a student, internships, research positions, and hackathons. Now, internships are really good where you spend like three months interning at a specific company. And what's nice about them is one, the interview process is way easier for an intern position compared to a full-time position sometimes, but it's still super competitive. Two, if you do get the internship and you perform well enough, you can get a return offer, which means you can get a full-time position or you can intern there again without having to go through the interview process, which is amazing. And three, the money. Now for research positions, these aren't exactly like internships or industry jobs, but they're pretty helpful if you need some experience on your resume or if you want to pursue a higher level of education because it's way easier to get into these positions compared to an internship at least. The only difficult part is maybe getting your name published on a paper, but if the goal is for a job, then a research position is a good way to get some experience. All you really have to do is ask a professor if you can help with the research. This could be a professor at your college or even if you don't go to that college. Surprisingly, some professors will still let you work with them, but it'll be way easier if you contact the professor that's in your university. So ask that professor if you can work with them. If they agree, then congratulations, you can get some experience. Pretty cool. Now as for hackathons, it's a pretty fun activity where you're going to be in a team with other students and you get to build something. What's nice about hackathons is you get to meet other students. Some hackathons are sponsored by companies where they'll even have recruiters from those companies looking to hire people for full-time positions or intern positions. And if you win the hackathon, you get some cool prizes. Now what's nice about hackathons is you get hands-on experience building something with a team and if it's good enough, it can be on your resume. So it's pretty helpful. I'll say if you have the time, the money, because college is so expensive, this is ridiculous, at least in the US. You like computers, you have the passion, you're not doing this just for the money. You wanna get a research job or you wanna go into a higher level of education like a master's or PhD program, then um, sure, why not? As for software engineering jobs, college will definitely make it easier to get into those positions. At the end of the day, if you have the skills and the connections, you'll get the job. But if you don't have any of this, I wouldn't recommend computer science. So my final verdict, should you study computer science? The answer is 